Hello there, uh, very good evening and welcome to Recom Watch. I'm your host, Eddie Lee, and of course this evening I'm joined by uh, no other than Joseph Hamilton, um, a candidate for the People's Progressive Party and uh, uh, constant, if you want to call it, on Recom Watch nightly. Joe, uh, good evening and welcome to the program. Hi, Eddie, good night. It is day 27 of the National Recount of Votes cast on March 2nd. Um, we are one day shy, or matter of fact, a few hours shy of three months since those elections. Um, I always like to go back to give people an idea or a reminder as to what transpired the, um, shortly after the elections. As a matter of fact, uh, the elections, uh, the activities themselves were deemed um, free, fair, and credible by all political parties that contested the elections, local and international observers, and of course, um, members of the diplomatic community who uh, visited polling stations and participated um, in an in a observer status on elections day. Shortly after the vote, maybe about the uh, third or the, the latest to fourth of March, um, the AP and UAFC claimed victory. Uh, we had Mr. Granger meeting with his supporters, uh, thanking them for their support. And um, I know on one occasion he said to them that um, by, by sunrise or by sundown tomorrow, by sundown tomorrow, he said to them, um, your president will be soaring for a second term. The People's Progressive Party Civic and uh, the other new political parties who saw what Mr. Mingo did um, on two occasions, on the 5th of March, as well as on the 13th of March, um, resisted any attempts to allow Mingo's uh, fraudulent figures to go forward. And here we are with a recount of the votes. I always like to give people a background as uh, so to the context in which we're going to have these programs. So uh, today I'm seeing here 97 boxes were completed. I'm going to quickly give a breakdown um, to the public, Region 4, 36 boxes, Region 6, 33 boxes, Region 9, 2 boxes, but Region 9 has been completed, and Region 10, 26 boxes. It therefore means uh, the count remains for Region 4, Region 6, and Region 10. Um, the tabulated boxes thus far are 1,780 for the general elections and 1,780 and 76 for the regional elections. Joe, despite all of this 27 days, um, we have had quite an eventful uh, period with the recount. I'm gonna give you some opening comments, then we're gonna go into some very, very serious issues, some very, very troubling um, issues with regards to what is happening with the recount. Well, what, 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 Eddie, these last uh, couple of days, it is saying to the Guyanese people, is that from the inception, GCOM could have counted average 100 boxes per day. Uh, that is what it is saying to us, that it is because of their non-acceptance from the beginning of establishing more counting uh, stations. And secondly, allowing APNU OFC to slow the process down by presenting those ridiculous objections that we will deal with in a short while. I get a sense from some of the post coming out from the small parties, especially uh, their members who are at the recount stations gave the impression today that apparently at the region four stations, um, APNO AFC agents somewhat have slowed down their madness regarding the objections. And um, if that is so, then that's a good sign that by weekend, 
this recount should be over and will be over. And so if they keep the trend, the way they're going, I think right now, if I'm right, less than 600 boxes to be counted. 599, I think I saw some, some number. So the 599 average uh, 100 boxes per day. If we look at a two day trend, it means that in the next six days, they should be over and done with as regards the recount itself. And then Lowenfield would have to deal with the other matters. And then Claudette Singh and our commission would have to deal with a matter of the declaration of the results so that we can swear in the president elected to govern for the next five years, Mohammed Irfan Ali. That is the way I see uh, the next couple of days playing out and the next two weeks. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, regardless of, um, well, irrespective of the pace at which the recount is going, like you rightly said, the madness by the AP and UAFC continues. Um, the frivolous objections, the baseless objections, the objections and the allegations of, of irregularities and fraud without presenting any form of evidence continue um, with the, 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 the coalition um, at the recount center. Now there are, and, and I want us to deal with some specific allegations, allegations of dead people voting, allegations of people who have migrated voting, um, and it, uh, these are just numbers that are plucked out of thin air with absolutely no supporting evidence. Uh, mm -hmm. Clearly, a fishing expedition by a desperate cabal who recognize that they have lost the elections. Um, they have the same the copies, the same copies of statements of poll that the PP would have received from GCOM. And like you always say, maybe by the, the by morning of 4th of March, a new that they lost the elections and they knew that the PUP won the elections. And likewise, the PUP knew that we won the elections and that they lost the elections. The fact of the matter is, despite all of that, they made several attempts using Mingo, and we'll talk about the Mingo fraud because that seems to be a taboo issue for the, for the AP and new AFC. They, everything else is fraud for them, except where there's evidence um, to show clearly that Mingo attempted electoral fraud, a criminal um, a criminal act. But what I want to do, Joe, is I, I want to share, before we go into the, um, the program deeper, I want us to have some discussions around this particular, um, this particular video that I'm about to share. Um, and I'm going to share it. These are persons who the cabal said are dead. Um, and voted on March 2nd. So we're going to show this video. We're going to have some discussions. I have some more videos that we're going to show throughout because we need to expose the lies and propaganda of this desperate AP and UFC cabal. So let me go straight to this video first, for Joe, and then we'll come back and have some discussions. This is my passport, and I'm a right man of the issue. My tourism, I'm not dead. My name is Ezra Dabler Chan, born on the 24th of August, 1980. I voted at the general and regional elections held on the 2nd of March, 2020. As you can see, I'm alive as well at the moment. This is my ID card. My ID card number is 146-722-492. Have a look again. The Vedra Darabland Chance, for the Port of August, I voted at the 2nd, on the March 2nd, it is me. I am not dead. My name is Vijay Arti Chakrapal. I go to CIC Corilla Higher Primary School, Arbitration. My address is 188 Black Corilla Higher. My name is Mina Sehra Award. My name is Sasha Ford, Dr. Corilla Higher. And I am strong. I am still alive. I go to the last section at CIC Primary School. Oh, 
So, Joe, Joe, these are some of the people they claim are dead. Well, as, um, as Amna said, they got up, voted for us, and then they went back. So apparently they have all, they have gotten up again, because the fact is that people are very much alive and well, and are coming forward to debunk the um, lies peddled by the APNU AFC using their name. And so we await to see how the APNU AFC uh, respond to the fact that people who they have indicated are deceased uh, in several regions, they are coming forward, young and old, to present themselves as persons who are very much alive. Also, Eddie, uh, I know you have other videos uh, that you will show about persons who they claim uh, don't live in Guyana, who have migrated yeah. and who, who were not in Guyana on the 2nd of March, uh, 2020. A couple of things importantly, and uh, it shows the competence level at GCOM because today the PRO after running from the press for two weeks or thereabout spoke to the press today. And what she basically said uh, at least what was indicated with our responses is that of the 207 names that were given to GCOM by the APNU AFC and subsequently sent to the commissioner of police to check to see whether these persons left Guyana and whether they returned to Guyana. She's indicated that GCOM did no checks or verification to determine whether these 207 names were ticked off on any list uh, as persons who might have voted. And that, 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 that informs us that this body just collected these names, did no verification of their own, and sent it off to Sidney James. And secondly, of the 207 names that were sent, he responded by saying that only 172 he could vouch for and clarify that they might be out of the country or out of the uh, out of the country. So, so what is happening? As we have been saying, it is just a wild fishing expedition. That is what APNU EFC is on, and as Norton said that they will send these names as propositions to GCOM. And that is what it was. And GCOM itself, as of this moment, couldn't say to us whether the names sent to James, they were checked to see if these names were ticked off. Um, 
on the list from which uh, they were on. And she further went on to say that GCOM presently apparently is in no position to do that because as she indicated, those boxes checked that these objections might have um, been raised at the recount stations. They're already sealed and they're back in the, um, in the, in the containers. And therefore you, you, you question what really is going on. We know what is happening as regards APNU AFC. Uh, they're in fiction land and fantasy land, but when you listen to what the PRO said today, uh, Ms. Yolanda Ward, you shudder to think how this organization that is responsible for running uh, and con conducting our elections, how they really function. But Joe, um, also interestingly, um, if you listen to what the PRO said, um, and the fact that these objections were raised at the recount of the box, um, when one looks at the, the statement of recount, I suspect many of those objections that were raised and those numbers that were submitted, many of those persons, if not all of them, didn't vote. And it's for this reason, I think, even the APNU AFC uh, rep in there signed those statements of recount because they recognized that these objections were made, but many of these were not ticked. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm seeing that the commissioner of police responded to say 173 of the 207 were overseas. I want to, to juxtapose that with the fact that when they call 60 and 50 and 40 names in, in the, the recount stations, maybe one is ticked or two is ticked. Maybe that is what accounted for the 30 odd who um, the commissioner of police said were in the country apparently out of the 270, he said 170 something, 76 I think it was, thereabout was out of the country. So it clearly shows that APNU is on a fishing expedition and drops GCOM on what we call in Guyanese parlance a wild goose chase. So nobody checked to see if the, two, the 200 and odd names were ticked. And they sent the thing to the police. In, a set, in, in, in essence, what the police commissioner said, yes, yeah, some of these people are overseas, but there's, I, don't, I can't tell you if they voted. That's your job. You're supposed to check the list. I want to make a point though, Joe, and Having thought about this, I read the GCOM's official, GCOM officials are saying that the statements of, the, sorry, the OLE in those boxes are, are OLEs that the party agents would have used and GCOM staff on elections day. Am I correct? Yes. So, how do you determine, because you may have in a polling station of let's say 150 persons, maybe a hundred out of that, of those voted, the GCOM official, the, returning, the, the, the presiding officer may have ticked correctly that hundred, but party agents may have over ticked or under ticked if you want to call it maybe tick 98 or maybe tick 107, maybe by error or maybe deliberately so that they can create, because I, I know for a fact that those lists are not cross-matched, are they? Are they? The thing is she, she, the PRO said that there was no validation with GCOM list and the other part at uh, the party agents list. And that's the so point, the point is of the of this series set of names, you can have different sets or different amounts of names crossed off or ticked off. That, that is the point. And the other important thing is that 
as the presiding officer and whoever is working, no way you can vouch for the presiding officer that all the names that were ticked off indeed voted or the names that they ticked had any relationship to persons who might have voted. Because the point you raise, it's, it, it's, you ha can have, and even the, the PRO herself made a point about human error. And, and so so, so the, the, the thing is, no way you can attach any tick in real terms to a name oh, and a serial number on any list. That, that is a fundamental issue here. And I suspect the, the, the commission of police, um, that was their position. You asked me to check to see uh, of these names who are out the country or might have been out of the country, and that is what it is. But there is no way you can attach the names to voting on elections. Ballot. You can't attach it to a ballot. No way you can attach the name to, the, to, to a ballot in any box. And therefore, the question remains why the, 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 the chairman allowed ourselves, as, as, as I'm, I'm quoting from uh, LJP leader, why would she allow herself to go down this slippery slope where you have no facts to rely on? It is just speculation. It is just allegation. And according to Norton, now it is propositioned by the AP and UAFC. And you see, I went through that, Joe, because I want to make the point that I feel Guyanese need to recognize that we're dealing with a set of wicked, a bunch of wicked, devious, desperate people in the AP and UAFC. So when all those lists are placed in the box, um, Jacob's copy went back. What exactly are we relying on, you know, to, to verify those names that Apnu plucked out of thin air? Because we heard Sanjeev last night talking about people calling for serial numbers that are not, um, that are way beyond the number on the list. We heard stories of people calling a list of serial numbers for a wrong box. We heard stories of people objecting to six names on a list when only four voted, when only there's four persons at the polling station. We heard story of people objecting to all the other names on a list except the one person who voted. So it is clearly a fishing expedition. What Joe Harmon and, and the cabal wants to do is really they want to, to, to create something to give to their supporters. They want to create something to give to their supporters. That is why we'll go to this next video, Joe, um, so we can show the Chinese people how devious are the people we are dealing with. I'm going to bring up this other video here with regards to people who they claim um, were out of the country. Right, I'm gonna let me get this Street. On March 2nd, I vote at number 10 school. 
So there you have it, Joe. And these are additional people. Last night we had the folks from Region uh, 7, including a young man whose father is a counselor for APNU AFC in Bartica, including the wife of a prominent pastor. And I understand based on what Gail said. The counselor, the AP and UFC counselor, both of his sons are listed as being overseas. These are the lies, misinformation, and propaganda that are being spewed by people like Joe Harmon, people like um, Aubrey Norton, and the others to mislead and to misguide the people of this country and to create confusion deliberately in an electoral process that they themselves along with everybody else, acknowledged was absolutely free, fair, and transparent on elections day. The only confusion, the only attempt to tamper with the elections came from Mr. Mingo on the 5th of March, on the 13th of March. Joe. The other thing, Eddie, I mean, we dealt there with the people who they allege are deceased and those who they allege have migrated. And we have we have uh people have been coming in as they hear their names being mentioned and from all the regions that that is the thing people from all the regions are, are, are coming forward to 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 speak to this matter the other uh lie told by joe Harmon and apnu afc is the suggestion that GCOM apparently disenfranchised some 8,000 disciplined forces um, members uh, by not stamping their ballot. And everyone knows that there is no way you can know which ballot belongs to whom. But what is important is that we have counted so far in the recount, the, I think it's about 330,000 ballots or thereabout. And the PRO today indicated that the total amount of rejected ballots for all the regions and boxes so far counted is 1,536 rejected ballots. Further, she went on to say that the, the least amount of the 1,536 are ballots that were not stamped. She went on to say that most of the, the, the ballots are for people who um, did not, the, the presiding officer could not uh, determine whether they were voting for which party. In some instances, people put several X's. In some instances, people put their names and that kind of thing, but the least of the amount was ballots that were not stamped with a six digit number. And therefore, Harmon and the APNU, and I saw uh, former army officer Gomes join the bandwagon spewing the kind of uh, nonsense 
via a, a, a letter. So you see that is another lie told by 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 um but in the case of, of, of the lie told by Harmon and, and the others regarding the disciplined forces um, vote, that, that's a very serious um, matter. It shows the point you were raising uh, just now. How devious and evil these people are. That they would attempt to, by their lie, blatant lie, rile up the people in uniform by fabricating a story that is just fictional. And I want to see them respond to the fact that there's only 1,536 rejected ballots thus far when we have already counted 330,000 um, ballots. There is no way near to this 8,000 that they're talking about. And in the first declaration, the total amount of ballots rejected in all the declarations wherever does not reach 5,000 rejected ballots, does not. And the totality of rejected ballots has nothing to do with unstamped uh, ballots. So that is the evil, you know? How evil and despicable the likes of Armand and Norton and Alexander and, and, you know, for viewers today, someone sent me a post, Alexander, on Facebook, and he was gloating about Mingo fraud. Basically, he was suggesting that Mingo is the smartest of all the people who attempted fraud because he, he, he traced elections 1997, 2001, 2006, 2011, whatever. And secondly, the guy indicated that he have information about fraud at elections in 1961. When in 1961, Alexander would have been just about six years old. You understand? You understand what is happening here? So he, he has information about um, fraud, tracing fraud of it. And, was bold enough to say that Mingo is in good company of people who have attempted uh, fraud in elections, but just that Mingo was smarter. Well, there are two things there. How can you be a commissioner for the entity that is responsible for running elections that must be, should be, free, fair, and transparent. And apparently you have no difficulty at all with your registration officer who tampered with election results, not once, but twice. And you have no difficulty with that, but you're fetching along allegations made by the party you support, trying to make it fact about people who are deceased and people who are, are not living in Guyana when those persons are living here and those persons are very much alive. And Eddie, you, you can't be diplomatic and have niceties anymore when you're discussing and you're talking about these guys because these are people who are attempting to perpetuate the worst evil on the people of Guyana, trying to take away th their vote, trying to suggest that their vote is not important. And once you do that, automatically, you run a country into dictatorship. Because once 
They, it is not important anymore for elections to be free, fair, and transparent. It means that whichever party is in government can give us at any time any election results that they want to give us so that they can stay in power. That is why, and, and you have a man who's a commissioner of the body that is responsible. And therefore, I have no qualms in saying that one of the intellectual authors of the attempt to rig the elections of 2020 is Vincent Alexander. And I have said that even before elections, that all the shenanigans that were happening uh, with the list, he was the person who was mostly involved in all the strategies and plans. Firstly, to take people off the list that was his first devious plot when they attempted to do house to house registration. It had nothing to do with doing a new list and having the list pure. It was attempting to take people's name off the list. Secondly, when he didn't get when they didn't get through with that, they sought to merge the truncated um, house to house with the voters list or the NRR that was clean at the time. And now he is gloating about Mingo fraud instead of seeking to have GCOM calling the police to investigate the fraud. It shows the type of character those persons are. It shows how despicable they are, how devious and how evil they are. And that is the reason why we have to continue to fight them every day and every night. We cannot allow them to do that to this country. There is also a pattern, Joe. When you look at and, and you listen to what are, uh, the statements coming out from these guys, you know, and I like to go back, I mentioned it at the beginning of, of, of this program. The fact that they started just after the elections, I see. I was looking at the video today. The Harmon saying, based on the declarations, Up New FC won the elections, um, and all that needed to be done is for an official declaration. Remember, Basil Williams uh, heading into his vehicle, and you know, and and he himself said on election uh, just after the elections that the, the the process was credible, was free and fair. The same sentiments were expressed by a lot of leaders in, in the coalition. Those were the sentiments by the chair of GCOM. The observers, the local and international observers, all said that the elections were free, fair, and credible on the day itself. You know? The point I want to make is that when you listen to the lies coming out from this coalition, they had 2,000. 239 or 339, the figures always uh, get me mixed up there. On agents on elections day, they had their candidates moving from polling station to polling station to interact with their, 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 their agents to find out if everything is going fine. They, you had the international community, you had international observers, you had local observers, you had staff from GCOM. Now, Almost three months after the elections, you were claiming victory. You realize there is a recount that will unmask the mango fraud, that will expose the, the, the reality that you lost the elections, and you just decided you're going to start talking about irregularities, and you're going to start compiling long lists without no evidence, and you're going to put Aubrey Norton and Kathy Hughes and, and David Patterson and all of them to go out there and lie to this nation. These people, I think the fundamental objective here, the, the objective of all of this is that they need to, one, they need to tell their supporters something, that they lost the elections, but they want to blame the PPP for losing the elections. They don't want to take the blame for destroying the economy. They don't want to take the blame. They don't realize that they, they lost the elections because they fire 
uh, close to 30,000 people or over 30,000 people lost jobs and that, that number continues to climb, that they fired the sugar workers. They don't want to take the blame that they took the money from the treasury that was supposed that could have gone towards building this country, building the economy and provide a better life for people. But they took that money and they pumped it into um, Durban Park. And they took the money and one man decided he's going to take two, over $200 million to do a feasibility study for a bridge for an unsolicited bid. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about it took away the school children's grant. Those are the factors that are responsible for them losing the elections. Not the PPP and not no irregularity. The only fraud in the electoral process that was committed is this the claimant Mingo stealing over 22,000 votes, if I'm correct here, Joe. Is it 22? Yeah, 22,000 votes. Pardon me, they the votes for the APLU and stealing votes from the PPP. That's the reality, that's the fraud. What is sad? What is, what, what, what is, 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 is not surprising. What is sad really is the fact that Alexander Harmon and all the others refuse to speak about what we have evidence for. That is Mr. Mingo taking votes on behalf of the coalition. Why are they looking at that? Why are they mentioning that? What Alexander did is to glorify the man. It's to say the man is in good company but the man is smarter, you know? That is what we have. Well, Eddie, how do you expect them to speak about their co-conspirator getting caught? You, you have to remember and everything that is playing out, Mingo was not on his own. Mingo was a participant of a political plot, a political plot hatched by PNC, APNU, AFC, a political plot that involved the commissioners representing the government at GCOM. That is what Mingo didn't went out on a frolic of his own. Mingo was just carrying out a fraudulent exercise that was hatched by the leadership of the coalition. And therefore, if they condemn Mingo, they would be condemning themselves because the fraud is theirs, it belongs to them. So, so that is why, why they don't speak to it or speak about it at all. And they will never speak about it. Um, the fact that people are coming forward now, Eddie, to say I'm alive and I'm here, I never left Guyana to live overseas, I am waiting anxiously in the next 24 hours to see how they respond to that, what new lies they will um, respond, what new lie they would, they, they, they would bring to the Guyanese people to respond to the fact that this person that you said uh, was not here uh, to vote and somebody voted in their place, or this person that you said is deceased and somebody voted for them, they're very much here. I want to hear them respond to that. And, and you know, Joe, in addition to that, the fact that they are even going after their own supporters, they're claiming that their own supporters are dead or out of the country, this is desperation. What APNU did is to throw all of its polling agents under the bus by saying that these people somehow colluded with, 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 with the PPP and GCOM um, to have dead people vote and to have migrants voting. You know, any political party, and we know that for a fact that APNU would have selected its best, well, its best, you know, its strongest people and place them in polling stations. They would have trained those people to detect certain things. Let's say you have over 2,000 polling agents. Let us just say, okay, some of them colluded. All of them did? So you're going to say all of them? You recruited them, who are your supporters? 
and you place them in the polling stations, are you saying that there are PUP supporters that you recruited and placed there? Are you saying that people like Alexander Lowenfield and the others who hired the staff of GCOM, are you saying that they deliberately hired PUP supporters who colluded with the PUP to rig the elections? Are you saying that the PUP was that good that it recruited people to go and vote multiple times or vote for other people after finish voting for themselves or before voting for themselves? The Guyanese people, Joe, are not that crazy. Guyan Guyanese are smart people. And even the supporters of the coalition have recognized that the stories that they're telling are what we call Nancy stories. That is what Joe Harmon and, 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 and Christopher Jones and, 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 and all of them talking, Nancy story. Nobody would believe that, that your own supporters, your own agents were going there and collude in over 2,000 polling stations to put you out. But then if that happened, then you deserve to be out because it means your own supporters, the best that you recruit, don't want you. You know, it's 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 Nancy's story. These guys are living in a bubble. They're living they're like, Andy, they don't they don't care. They don't care because the important thing for them is attempting to stay in power. That that is the important thing. Uh, the other important thing for, for, for many of these guys is that they know the scale of corruption they were involved in, and so they're afraid they're, they're afraid of jail time. You know, so so that is why they believe that the only thing that can save them from jail time is is to stay in power and to stay in government, and that is why they're fighting, and that is why every day they're coming up with um, different lies uh, to sell to the Guyanese people. But you're correct, the Guyanese people, regardless who they voted for March second, they're smarter than uh, than these people, and you know, as the EU ambassador indicated couple of days ago, that the worst thing he sees happening is people um, attempting to insult the intelligence of the Guyanese people. And, and that is what they, they, they continue to do um, every day to try to suggest that um, the elections uh, was not credible. And for Armin, uh, you know, he said it was not credible, but we still win it. You know, the point is, the boxes that are being opened, opened every day uh, does not, bo uh, it, it don't bear out that nonsense that he, and he knows that. He knows that very well. And so Eddie, as we continue to say that we have to be vigilant for the next couple of days, for the next two weeks at least, and we have to ensure that as fast as APNU AFC come forward with their lies and fabrication, we challenge them and debunk them uh, expeditiously so that they have to go again and to make some more lies, some new lies. And that is what we, we, we are doing. And for viewers, that is why these programs are necessary and important, you know, and some people would say, you know, some of the things that you say tonight, we heard them already. Yes, it is important. That is the reason why we keep saying them, so that you would not forget what is responsible for us being where we are. When we should have had a government in place, a president in place three months ago, doing the people's business. That is um, what we should have had. But we are not there yet because of the attempted fraud by Granger and Anis Cabal. And um, everything that we said, all the results that were, were um, made available from the nine districts, all of them, they're matching, the SOPs are matching the SORs with um, just minimal variances, couple of votes here and there. But the, the variance in the election is the mingo fraud that we saw of the 85 boxes on the East Bank. And when we finish um, 
not Georgetown, and we go to East Coast, we would see more of Mingo's fraud in the, uh, in the um, villages as we go along the East Coast corridor. We would see how uh, stark this fraud was, um, making votes for APNU and taking away votes from the People's Progressive Party civic. But we have to continue to persevere. We have to continue to speak to the people of Guyana, Eddie. And we have to continue to um, challenge APNU AFC when they come forward with the lies and the fabrication. And that is our job because the fight, as I continue to say, is between democracy and dictatorship. That is what this fight is about. Once we allow one time Granger and his cabal to take away our vote and our right to vote, we have lost it. We would lose it forever. 2015, we would lose it. 2030, we would lose it. And that's why this 2020 fight is necessary and important for us to make the necessary sacrifices that we are making. And Joe, I, I, want, to, I want to also add that, um, and I don't want to alarm people, but as you can clearly see, the desperation of this cabal will even get worse as we go deeper into this recount. Um, because most of the other regions are complete, uh, completed. We just have region six, region 10, and region four being counted. Um, 10 and six are likely to finish within the next few days. Um, and just region four, like you said initially, that maybe by the end of this week, we are um, expected to be through the process. What this process will do, and is it's currently doing, is that it's exposing the Mingo fraud. What it's also doing is that it's confirming, <coughs> excuse me, and it's vindicating the People's Progressive Party Civic we uploaded the copies of the statements of poll that we received from GCOM. So it's not our copy, we didn't create them. These are GCOM documents that are um, each and every political party must receive. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we put together, we, 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 we are get, it's confirming, it's vindicating the party because it's showing that our numbers and the numbers in the recount are similar. It is also, bringing the supporters of the coalition and the leaders in the coalition back to reality that APNU AFC lost the elections. Joe, I'm gonna give you your closing comments. Uh, Eddie, um, we know that region nine was completed today and it confirms uh, that we won region nine uh, by over 2000 and odd votes and this SOR is actually similar uh, to the statement of poll. And therefore, we know that Region 6, um, we would win that when the SORs are, are, are made available. I think Region 6 just have like 60 or 68 boxes or something like that uh, to, to, to complete. Something like that, I think I, I saw some post by someone. And Region 10, I think, has um, somewhere about 70 boxes uh, to complete. And therefore, at that time, after, when those are completed, all the airport, the 12 stations would be uh, put to Region 4 to have that completed um, expeditiously. And so we say to members, we say to comrades, we say to viewers, we say to all Guyana, just be patient for the next two weeks. This travail will be over. You will get the president you voted for sworn in, and you will get the government you voted for to be in place so that we can deal with the problems that are facing this great and beautiful country of ours. All right, Joe. Um, I just want to just um, give the accurate figure there. I know you you were talking on top of your head. Uh, I'm seeing here uh, region six have just about 77 boxes remaining, while region 10 has 65 boxes 
um, <clears throat> remaining. So those two regions are expected to be completed within a matter of days. Um, region four, however, has uh, somewhere around 400, and let me get this correctly, 400 and um, just about 410, 470 boxes there about um, to be completed. And obviously when the two other regions are completed within days, those stations are likely to go to region four. Um, so by the end of the week, I, I suspect we can, if we continue with the same number, we have just about 500 odd boxes to be counted. And if you continue with about 100 uh, there about today, you're likely to finish uh, by the end of the week um, with this. I want to join you, Joe, in saying that, you know, I, I, I want to say to the supporters of the People's Progressive Party and to Guyanese at large, because many people who may have supported the coalition saw what happened and you have now uh, are on the side of democracy is that to be patient, um, we are very close to the end of this process. Um, it has been a, a quite an eventful, hard, tough, uh, three months almost, tomorrow, tomorrow marks for three months. Um, it has been frustrating for many people. The point is, is that we together as a people, and I want to, to remind people of the, the theme under which um, the People's Progressive Party civic campaign for the elections um, was held, that is stronger together for a better Guyana. So, you know, we're stronger together as a people and we have together as a people, we have to fight off any attempts at derailing our democratic gains over the years and to ensure that we preserve our democracy and that we be on the right side, the side of the rule of law, the side of the constitution and the side of democracy. So um, the struggle has been um, hard but we're close to the end of this struggle. So I wanna encourage you to be patient and to continue to follow what is happening. This is our Guyana, a Guyana for all of us. And we all have a right to protect our democracy and to, to stave off, to fight off any attempt at taking us down the road of dictatorship. I wanna close also by saying that we will continue to expose the lies and propaganda the misinformation that is coming out of the coalition cabal, the desperate cabal who have lost the elections and are playing to any straw, um, you know, to try to derail the process. The fact of the matter is, they claim people are overseas and voted, they claim people are dead and voted, and people are coming forward and they are showing that they were in Guyana and that they are not dead. So we will continue to do this. Joe, I wanna thank you so much for joining uh, me this evening. Uh, so if we can talk to the people of this country, and also, um, I, I should have mentioned earlier that our stream is being broadcast live in the New York Tri-State area uh, this evening through the Farouk Truman radio. Um, thanks, Farouk. And um, of course, we want to say that we're happy that we can get our message. We can bring the facts to the people, not only in Guyana, but our Guyanese brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Joe, thanks again. Hey, Eddie. Good night. And thanks to our viewers. Have a good rest of the evening. Bye for now.